benvenuti a questa pillola di Take 5 Jazz e Dintorni versione web tv e diretta emanazione di Take 5 Jazz e Dintorni radiofonica, programma che conduco da 37 anni, da prima sulle frequenze FM di Radio Sherwood, ora in web sul sito di sherwood.it ogni giovedì notte alle 22.45. Io sono Giuliano, ho qui come due ospiti, eh, uno from New York, eh, Spike Wilner. Hi Spike, welcome, thank you to be here. Um, Spike Winner è uh, titolare di un piccolo locale, un jazz club a New York e qui in veste di uh, pianista, leader di un trio jazz che si sta esibendo in questi giorni al uh, Festival Jazz di Padova che ho avuto modo, piacere e onore di lanciare 16 anni fa, questa è la sedicesima edizione con Gabriella Piccolo Casiraghi che ancora lo dirige e Silvia Bazza che ancora ci lavora Spike è qui nell'ambito di questa bella iniziativa che c'è stata quest'anno di gemellaggio fra il suo locale, lo Smalls, e il festival stesso. L'altro ospite che abbiamo qui questa sera da New York, anche lui, è una specie di inviato speciale da New York per il festival e per, e per la trasmissione in questo caso. Benvenuto Enzo. Enzo Capua e si occupa di jazz, è esperto di jazz, è conoscitore. Scrive di jazz e tra le altre cose in questi giorni in edicola c'è il mensile eh, Musica Jazz eh, all'interno del quale c'è un suo articolo proprio sullo Smalls e a Enzo lascerò la parola proprio per questi due o tre motivi, primo conosce molto bene eh, lo Smalls, conosce bene Spike e gli altri musicisti, conosce bene l'inglese, abbiamo deciso di fare questa chiacchierata in inglese fra loro due e poi per chi come me non lo parla benissimo eh, sarà eh, ovviamente messo in onda sottotitolato quindi lascio la parola a Enzo So, I would like to start with two questions in one okay. First thing, um, what is your impression, your feeling about the uh, Padua audience Uh, the acceptance of the audience of, of your music and uh, second what is the on your opinion the the difference between this italian audience and the american audience you're accustomed to play with uh well i've been very uh happy to discover the audience of padua and the uh the italian people here um i was very impressed by two things one that it was so full, that we had so many people that came to this concert, uh, much more than I expected, and uh, that the people were so quiet and attentive and polite, but also very warm and uh, gave back a lot. So there's a wonderful feeling of energy from the audience to the musician, and uh, for me as a musician, m the most important thing for me is, is to connect with the people with my music. I want to play in a way that i can reach the person right to their heart and to touch them. Uh, you know, uh, at Smalls Jazz Club, we have very good audiences there. Uh, it's a similar feeling where people come for the music and to listen. Uh, but very often in other venues or in other places in America, it's very easy to feel like nobody listens to you at all, that, that, uh, that they're not interested or maybe just too stupid to really understand. I don't want to say that, you know, because America is the country of jazz. Jazz was born there, probably they are spoiled because they have a lot of jazz over there. Uh, anyway, um, Smalls is very well known in New York as a club for young listeners, a young performer, probably the best known for that. So there is a similarity between you know, this kind of audience in Padua and the audience at Smalls. Mm -hmm. And you told me that uh, you start at Smalls as a performer, as a pianist, and now you are the owner. Uh, this coming here, there will be the 20th anniversary of this wonderful club. Can you tell us how did you start there to perform and then you become owner? And, and now how you, can, uh, you want to celebrate this 20th anniversary? Uh, well, Smalls was started by a man named Mitchell Borden, who's a great man, a very uh, unusual person, someone who lives life like a philosopher, not like a businessman, and uh, he loves music, and he created a very unique environment in New York City where uh, he made something very inexpensive and uh, 
open all the time and uh, the students would come and stay all night and and it very soon became a culture for musicians there uh, young musicians really who came there and made their home there and began to grow and because a musician needs to have a regular performance to grow as as a band he had several artists that became residents of Smalls and over a period of years developed into musicians that they are today and uh, you know musicians such as Kurt Rosenwinkel and Chris Potter, Brad Meldow, Jason Linder, Omar Avital, Peter Bernstein, uh, Grant Stewart, all these musicians they were originally just young guys playing and played every night and night after night after night and uh, I was one of these musicians myself. I, I came in at just one month after the club opened and uh, Mitch gave me a, a gig that started at 2 a.m., 2 in the morning, 2 to 6. That was my show. But I did this every Tuesday, and uh, it became my uh, regular slot. And during this period, uh, I also grew, you know, as an artist and to, to, to develop my ideas about jazz and to learn and also to know all the other musicians in the, uh, the New York scene. Um, after September 11th, the club began to have a lot of problems with money. Uh, because the rent began to go way up, and uh, there was also much more uh, stronger codes from the new mayor at that time, Giuliani, made very strong laws for safety, and the fire department made a problem, and there was a lot of uh, things that caused Smalls to close because of these issues, and uh, Smalls was closed for almost two years. Um, then what happened was... Um, Another man, a Brazilian man, took the space that was Smalls and got the lease, and he made a new bar. He made a Brazilian bar, but he put a lot of money into this bar to make safety, fire escape, new bathrooms, new bar. Uh, but the problem was when he opened his bar, nobody came because they wanted Smalls. They did not want his bar. And so uh, he went and found Mitch and said, hey, look, we reopened Smalls, and I'll own it, and you manage and uh, Mitch agreed, and so there was a, a period of about a year and a half with just this strange kind of smalls. And then after that, this Brazilian man was not happy because there was no money, because jazz clubs make no money. And he said to Mitch, I'm going to sell this place, and uh, if you want it, you can have it to sell. And uh, Mitch was at that time my friend, and we discussed this, and uh, he told me this. And so I decided that uh, I would try to buy the club myself. And uh, I had an apartment, so I took a mortgage, a loan, against my apartment. And uh, we bought the club. We bought the lease. We bought the uh, liquor license. And uh, that was in uh, February of 2007. And Mitch is still my partner to this day. And we, we worked very hard to restore Smalls to the same uh, philosophy of music, which is to support young artists, to let them grow, to give the residencies to artists that need to grow, and uh, late night jam sessions, and just late night shows in general. And uh, now I'm very happy because there's many young musicians that are beginning to grow through the system of smalls. For example, Melissa Aldana. For example, Tivon Pennicott. You know, the, the people that won in this Monk competition were all smalls musicians. And uh, you know, some of the guys like Yotam, he's come up now in the new Smalls. And uh, so we're starting to see new generations of very, very talented artists come through the club. And, and that makes me very happy because part of my, my job is to see this music grow and, and, and let it continue. And uh, next year, uh, in April, we will have a 20-year anniversary of Smalls. Uh, and I'd like to have a big concert, I think, to celebrate Mitchell Borden and Smalls and um, the musicians that have grown and played there. Uh, let's hope we can have also some Italian musician coming for that uh, celebration. Yeah, we do. yeah, of course. Well, you know, Carlo Atti, for example, who played with us last night, has spent a lot of time at Smalls. And also Tommaso Capilato, who came and played with us last night, has also spent a lot of time with Smalls. And we see Dado Moroni all the time. We see Pasquale Grasso. We see uh, Rossano Sportiello. It's, it's quite a few great Italian musicians that come through Smalls all the time. Uh, that's why I have this idea suggested to Gabriella to create this collaboration with you uh, because there are, I'm telling you, this uh, interesting thing. The young audience, late night and jam sessions, which is uh, quite unusual now 
and nowadays to have a, a long length jam session in a jazz club is not I think that happen anymore and uh, and uh, Smalls is one of the few p places in New York you can have that. Yeah. And the other important thing that you can speak about now is about the web, you know, that you broadcast the live shows there. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, tell me something about that and uh, uh, your idea to develop that in the future. Yeah. Uh, when I became uh, the owner uh, one of the things that I feel very strongly about is uh, to archive everything. We record every show at Smalls and uh, I started in September of 2007 to record every single show and to make a database of every artist who played there, bio, photo, the date of the gig and the recording of the gig. And then very shortly after that, we began to do live video streaming from the show, of the show, from the club. And at that time, the technology still was not very good, but we did it each night. And very quickly, it became very popular on the web. People would watch our club. And uh, now, here it is in this 2013, we have uh, more than 7,000 recordings. We have more than 600 musicians in our database. And also, we began to uh, have video now in our in our archive two three years of video and now HD video um, and in the future we're gonna begin a program starting early next year once we develop our website where we're gonna do a revenue share system where we believe that the club and the artist can be partners 50 50 and uh, we record the shows for vid with the video and we put it in the library and the people around the world can have a subscription for a very small amount of money to watch as much video as they like or listen as much as they like to any show. And uh, we will measure how many times the artist gets listened to and they get paid each month based on how popular they are as an artist. And uh, this is a very special also because all of the musicians will get paid. So if you're a drummer on somebody's show and maybe you're a drummer on 10 shows because you're a very popular drummer, then you might make more money than the guy who's the leader of the show. So it's a way to be very fair with all the artists and to see everything as a relationship between artists and club as partners, not as to fight, no dispute. That's very smart, that's very fair for the musician and for the audience. One last question before uh, closing this interview. Uh, do you see this collaboration with uh, Padua in the future, projecting in the future, you think we can go over in the next years? Oh yes, I think it's very important. Um, you know, I'm very, very happy, uh, and thank you very much for you and Gabriella for giving us this opportunity. But I think that there can be a very strong connection between Padua and this jazz festival in Smalls, and really jazz festivals in Europe. Because I think one problem that you have right now with jazz festivals is that you that you spend a lot of money for a very big star. But what can be done is you can have one say uh, a, a logo, Smalls Live, the people know Smalls and they say, oh Smalls, we know this club. Maybe they don't know the musicians, but because they know the club is good, they trust to come hear the concert. And so what we can do is maybe start to bring to Europe other young musicians to introduce to the Italian audience, to the French audience, Spanish audience, new artists and, and let them discover it. And also a way to present concerts very inexpensively or cheap so that everyone can have a chance to hear this music because what's important now is to make something that's economic but new and also with a chance for everybody to perform but uh, I think Padua is very special because there's a lot of love here for the music and a lot of passion and uh, a nice young audience and I think it's a perfect place to to begin this experiment. Thank you very much Thank Spike. You. Ci vediamo tutti da Smalls allora. Ok, allora come, come diceva Spike, aspettiamo gli sviluppi di questa operazione Padova e Smalls. E nel frattempo molta musica, come avete sentito, si trova sul web. Hanno anche fatto dei dischi invece fisici e vi auguro di trovarli. Eh, vi do appuntamento alle prossime pillole. Eh, ciao a tutti, grazie a Enzo e grazie a Spike. Thank you. Grazie.